Hi, my name's Tyler. Today I'm going to be comparing the top three contenders for best smartphone gimbal of 2018. We're going to be running some tests and see what the major differences are between these three. We have the Xeon Smooth 4, the DJI Osmo Mobile 2, and the Freefly Movi Cinema Robot. I'm a big fan of all three of these companies. I uh, own a Xeon Crane for my larger camera. I have a DJI drone and I can't afford anything by Movi, but they make good stuff. As far as price point goes, the Osmo retails for $129, the Smooth 4 at $139, and the Movi at $299. So there's a big price difference between these two and the Movi. There's also a lot of differences. It's almost like these two and then the Movi is in a totally different realm of its own. First, we want to talk about build quality and ergonomics. The Osmo is definitely the most plastic feeling, but it's also the smallest and it probably feels the best in your hand as far as the hand grip. It's the lightest and it's also the smallest. You could argue that the Movi is smaller, but this is definitely a lighter. I feel like you could slot this easier into your backpack. That being said, it also feels the most flimsy. The Smooth 4 is a little bit heavier and it also comes with this tripod grip, which you can turn into a second hand for shooting and get more stable shots. I've seen a lot of people complain that the grip on the Smooth 4 is clunky and weird in the hand. I don't really get that. I think it's fine. And then the Movi is in a completely different world on its own. This thing is like super heavy duty. The biggest difference with the Movi is the way that it's laid out and designed to shoot. With these two, we have a single hand grip underneath and the Movi is designed with a handle on the side and this rubber piece underneath for you to put your other hand on and it's designed to be shot with two hands like this. I wasn't a huge fan of this when I first saw this. I thought that was a really dumb design. In doing some tests, there are times when I think this two hand is nice and there are definitely times when I much prefer the single hand. Next thing I'm gonna do is go through and balance all of these with my phone and see how long the setup and balancing process takes on each. Now I've already done this a couple times so I'm a little quicker now the Osmo doesn't come with any extra stand or base. It does have a tripod mount so you can buy a small tripod similar to the Smooth 4. But I'm just going to be using these exactly how they come out of box, no extra gadgets. Let's have a look at the Osmo setup. Okay, so that's the Osmo basically balanced. The Osmo balances nicely with the iPhone 8 Plus and if we turn it on that's balanced right there pretty nicely. Obviously, once you set this up the first time, it's gonna be a lot quicker. There's still a bit of tightening and loosening to get this to sit just flat. And now, obviously, the Smooth 4 is a little bit nicer because it comes on this stand and it makes balancing a little bit easier, but it's pretty similar to the Osmo. And that's about as good as we can balance the Smooth 4 because the Smooth 4 won't balance the 8 Plus perfectly. It still turns on fine and it works fine with it and balances. It doesn't extend far enough this way to sit flat with the 8 Plus, which I don't know if that's a huge deal. I don't know if that much adjustment is gonna make the motors work a lot harder. You can buy counterweights. So if you're gonna add on like lenses and stuff already, so that's an option. Now let's talk about the Movi uh, and the Movi balances like this. That's it. The design on this is uh, genius. Being able to just squeeze these on the back and stick your phone in, um, it's pretty incredible. Um, all right, let's go film some test footage. First couple tests, gonna be doing some walking and running shots. Wow, bet you didn't see any of those coming. I'm gonna be shooting most of these tests in the native camera apps for each gimbal. I know a lot of people use Filmic Pro and ProCam. As I said, I'm trying to test each one on how it was designed to be used. Also using the native camera apps lets me use all the functionality of the hardware and all the features. I'm gonna be shooting most of these tests in 4K, 24 frames a second, except for the Osmo, because in the native Osmo app, you can only shoot 4K 30 frames per second for some reason. It has a lot less options of frame rates. So I'm gonna be shooting that in 4K 30 and then scaling that to a 24 frame timeline.
I'm really out of shape. These running tests. Okay, no more running today. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, now we're trying some slow motion shots. I'm trying to get low to the ground to get the dogs running. This is where the Osmo and the crane stand out. Okay, so this is where I'm not sure how the movie is gonna go. I'm gonna try and hold it kind of like this to get it close to the ground. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. So, that wasn't terrible, but definitely not nearly as easy as the crane or the Osmo. Okay, next we're trying out some motion time lapses. All three of these gimbals have this feature. I was trying to find somewhere cool to do a time lapse, but there's no clouds in the sky. And because it's summer, apparently there's no people on campus. So just doing the best with what I got. Content is king, right? Starting with the Moby. There's like landscaping going on all around. I'm doing an eight second clip and that clip's gonna take four minutes, 20. I did a couple tests where I did the time-lapse but didn't press record. Apparently you have to trigger the time-lapse and press record um, on the Movi. Okay, so I tried three on the crane and none of them worked. One went the wrong way. One went really quick and then recorded in one spot. And then the other one just did nothing. So I'm sure there's a way to do it, but intuitively it's not working. Okay, last is the Osmo. I'm a little nervous because I feel like a strong gust of wind is just gonna blow that off. The final test is uh, sport mode. All gimbals have some sort of sport mode, high response mode. So I'm gonna try and test that out. Smooth 4 using the uh, sport mode trigger on the back. So final test with the Movi, I have the Movi set to fast response and I have the window set to zero. So let's see how this goes. So, running around with the dog, a little hard to see. I'm gonna try one other thing. Parkour!
Okay, I think, I think that's all the tests. Okay, final thoughts on everything. The Osmo 2, it's a good little gimbal. A lot of things I didn't like about it. I didn't like that I could only do 4K 30 frames per second and not 24 frames per second. I also didn't like that I couldn't set the resolution of my slow motion. The app has some cool features, but I think it's limited in a lot of ways. I also don't like that there's no lock mode. The other two lock nicely. But this one's I don't like that. Something I really liked about the Osmo that the other two didn't have is this little joystick. Being able to make small adjustments, especially when you're setting a time lapse, you're trying to set up your shot, having the little joystick, rather than having to use the direction to set your shot, being able to just move it with this is such a small, simple thing that I wish these two had. The other thing about the Osmo, and it might just be the 8 Plus, the larger phones, but every time I try to touch my screen, uh, I feel the motors shudder. It was really hard to like touch my screen and not feel like I was hurting the motors. With the Smooth 4, I can access everything from this menu in here. I barely have to touch the screen at all. If they're not gonna put any buttons on the front, at least make it strong enough so that I can touch the screen without it hurting the motors. I liked a lot of things about the Smooth 4. I really like the extra tripod grip. It lets me have a lot of movement. I like that that comes with that and I don't have to buy it extra. I don't really care about the zoom wheel. I thought that that would be a cool feature, but I don't think it works that great. And I probably wouldn't realistically use it that much. You can pull focus or zoom. Even pulling focus, I found it not that responsive. The thing I really don't like about the Smooth 4 is that in the app, there's no dedicated photo or video mode. I can press record for video or I can take a photo. I don't have a nice video screen like the other ones telling me what resolution I'm shooting in and all my video settings. It just has my standard exposure and I didn't like that. Even though I love the extra tripod, it takes up a lot of room in your bag like that, broken down compared to that. It's a lot of extra space for a smartphone gimbal. I could pretty much bring my crane for that much space. One of the other things I didn't like about the Smooth 4 is that there's no return to horizon level. With the Osmo, if you double click your main button, it'll return to center and horizon. If you have your trigger set to roll lock and click that, it'll reset it. But with the crane, because it doesn't have a trigger to move my camera around and I can't control the roll that well, if my horizon level got off, I couldn't really figure out a way to fix that. And that was really annoying. I think a lot of the horizons were off on the Smooth 4. The Movie Cinema Robot, I like a lot of things about that. I love that lock mode. I love how sturdy and durable it feels. I actually didn't mind the two-handed. I think the footage is the smoothest out of this for sure. At almost triple the price, you would, you would probably hope for that. I really like the app. Pretty much everything you need is right there. One thing I love about the Movi is how quickly you can switch to portrait mode. With the other two, you have to loosen and flip it 90 degrees and tighten it back up. With the Movi, if you turn roll on, turn it upright and then lock it, and then I've got portrait mode right there. If I'm switching between Instagram stories and stuff like that, and then I wanna switch back to shoot maybe some, some regular 16 by nine footage for YouTube as well, I can easily switch between those two. For my job in social media, switching between vertical and horizontal like that, that easy, is a game changer. That almost sells me on the Movi alone, that feature. But there's also quite a few things I didn't like about the Movi. I don't like how the Movi can't really do low to the ground. It's not that intuitive for any other shots besides this. Besides this configuration, if I wanna do anything else cool, it's not that great. I felt like with the Movi, I had a, a smaller range of motion. I would, I would hit the motors and the gimbals sometimes a lot easier. So if you're running around a lot, I don't know. It doesn't affect sort of basic shots, but quick movements. I ran into that issue a little bit. One small thing that I really hated is that the Movi doesn't have a grid mode in its app. The other two will give me a simple grid mode. All I want is a grid on my screen so I can see my rule of thirds. Is that too much to ask? So in the end, which one should you buy? And it really depends on your need. If you want the cheapest, lightest, smallest, throw it in your backpack, turn it on, get some smooth shots of the kids, maybe play around with some fancy things every now and then, but you really just want a little bit of extra stabilization for on a trip or something, then I think the Osmo 2 is a decent buy. If you want some more features and you wanna do a little bit more creative stuff and you're okay taking the extra second to set up your shots, then I think the Smooth 4 is really great. 
if I was to decide between the two cheaper ones, I would probably personally go with the Smooth 4. With the larger phone, I liked having the buttons to be able to control everything. And using the touchscreen on the Osmo just got really annoying. And I feel like I would burn out the motors. But if money's not an option and you want the best smartphone stabilizer on the market, hands down, it has to be the Movi Cinema Robot. If you're a content creator, if you're getting paid for your work, if you do it for a job like me, the reliability and the durability of the Movi knowing that just about every shot is gonna work out and it's gonna be as stable as possible. That peace of mind, along with everything just working nicely, makes it the winner in my opinion. I hope this video was informative. If you made it all the way to the end, consider giving the video a like to help out my channel. Thanks.